if we sing a Christmas hit? Hang all the mistletoe, I'm gonna get to know you better. This Christmas, and as we trim the tree, how much fun it's gonna be together. This Christmas, the fireside is blazing bright, and we're carrying. Christmas TLR. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, all right, all right. That Watch scared out. me more than it should because this is not even real. Okay. How many of you guys thought they were real? Like, be real. That How many really of you got thought me. they were real? Why come at you. me so much, man. My heart hurts. Oh, man, that was That's fun. That's fantastic. Hey, what's up, everybody? You guys feeling okay tonight? Yeah. Hey, one time for Caleb and Joy and Abby. Man. That was amazing. That was so good, so good, um, so good. Thanks, guys. Hey, well, uh, hey, I'm Ben, and this is Samer. Great to uh, see you. We're so glad you're here for Christmas Illuminated, home for the holidays. Oh, man, this is going to be a fun night. All right, y'all want to fight oh. tonight. Okay. He's got headshot, man. I can't fight, He's though. Okay. These are dangerous. I know. That was a bad idea. So, oh, man. Anyways, welcome to Christmas Illuminated. It's your first one. Yeah, my first ever Christmas Illuminated. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, if it's your first time here, if it's your first Christmas Illuminated, I'm welcome. right there with you. Yeah. I love Christmas time. Well, it's great we, time we have here. a lot of fun at Christmas Illuminated. There's a lot of fun things to do. One of my favorite Christmas Illuminated traditions is we love to give gifts away. That's one of my favorite things that we've done. I love that. Because it's just, I don't know, it's just fun to, to, Any, to give. Is there anything on your wish list this year? Um, uh, anything on my wish list. Gosh. It doesn't have to be cool. Uh, what, what's on your wish okay, list? Okay, fine. I, these like golf joggers that I think are cool. Hey, yeah. I, I, any golfers? They look really yeah. good on the models. Uh, They're not going to look nearly as good on me, but uh, yeah, they look fair. dope. I, I need a new leaf blower. So. You other golfers? Golfers? Do y'all are you on the golf team? Oh, okay, he, sorry, but that made it sound like he, I'm not impressed. He I, wanted he wanted some free golf joggers. That's probably, why he asked you. No, you're yes. still probably better than me. What do you shoot? On like a good day. Okay, fine. We can talk later. Ben, carry on. Okay, all right, all right. Carry, all right. Carry. Well, uh, we, we want to give some... Oh, 
play. We want to give some gifts away. Yeah, let's give tonight. gifts away. Sorry, um, sorry. And so uh, we actually asked some of you guys on Instagram okay. to say, hey, what was on your Christmas wish list? And so we're going to give some of those gifts away. Okay. But like we're going to have some fun doing it. Okay. Because we, we got to. We so got we're not to. just hand, we're not, it's not just we're a handout. we're just going to hand out. them out, even though we wish we, we could. We have done that before. Yes. But we thought we'd mix it up a little bit. Yep, yep. So um, I have actually asked my friend uh, Emma to come up on stage. Come on, Emma. You guys give it up for Emma. All right, come Emma. Up on stage. Yeah, come on up, Emma. Oh, All y'all right. stopped clapping too soon. Uh, a little bit <laughs> awkward there. There we go. Awesome. All right, Emma, Emma come, come on. on. Don't come be on afraid close. of the center of the stage. All right, Emma, come tell on. us, um, are you in school right now? What? Yeah, I'm a senior at Kennesaw. Uh, all right. Yeah. Awesome. What, what's, uh, what's your major? What are you I'm saying? a history education major. Okay, so awesome. So high school history teacher. Awesome. Oh, that's okay. amazing. That's, that's awesome. What's your favorite like era of history? Um, I love Native American okay. history. Okay. So. Yeah, okay. okay, you got some cool. cheers from backstage. Uh, yeah, awesome, Yeah, awesome. I was like, cool, what year is that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Something That's that. awesome, yeah. though. All right, That's Emily, really well, cool. thanks for playing. Um, we actually need some help from you guys, though, because yeah. this is like some crowd participation. And then, so, Ben, am, is this fair yeah. to say this is kind of like White elephant meets deal or no deal. Yeah, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, we're gonna okay. make up the rules though. Yeah, yeah. cool. Okay, that's so, fine. That's fine. So, Emma, I feel deal. like you're too far out. You need to be in the middle. Yeah, this come, is on, your Emma, come on, moment. You can stand. Stand, yeah, stand on right that. Here. Stand that's right here. Yeah. Uh, so here, here's the deal. Uh, ten of you are gonna play with us right now. Uh, if you look under your seat, there's some cards. One through ten. One through ten. If you have a card in uh, under your seat, go ahead and come up on stage. And if there's an empty seat next to you, if you see one, check it. Yeah, come up on stage. Yeah, yeah, that's Come on. Yep. Keep looking come on. around. Keep come looking on. around. If you, come on up. Come on. We come need on 10. Up. All right. Come on up. Here we go. Here we go. Come on up. Don't, go don't ahead, slip on a snowball. Go ahead and grab a gift. Grab a gift. Come on up. Emma, you're good. You're good. You just stay there right here. There should be 10, so find them, people. Yep, there should be 10. Find them. There should be 10. We're missing uh, how many? Yep, how many? There you go. There we go. Uh, here we One, go. One, two, three, four. Keep looking around. Keep Not looking that good. around. We got six more. All Would right. you put these in the balcony? All right. Here we go. Uh, uh, come looking. on, we, have, we got another one. Keep Here, y'all can stay. Y'all come with me. Y'all come with me. Y'all stand in there. Y'all come so over go here. ahead and line up one through ten. One, one through ten. ten. One yeah, through nine ten. down there. One okay. over here. Yeah, we got more people coming. One yeah, down here. Yeah, one down here. Yep. All right. Any other? Uh, uh, there's definitely more out right, there. Come on here. up. Come on up. Come on up. Um, how many do we have? How many? There we, do we go. Have? Come on. Go get a box. Go get a box. Is that okay. ten? We have one more box. We're missing what? Three? Have y'all still not found the card What three people just want to play? Okay. Yeah. Come on up. Come on up. I, I, I pointed uh, at him. Uh, okay, we got two. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, guys, okay, just because you know my name does not mean oh, you're going to get picked. I like it? that guy. Christmas, yeah, I believe. Yeah, you. Yep, yeah, yes, what? you're standing up. Yeah, okay, come cool. on up. Come on up. Okay. All right. Awesome, awesome. Okay, okay yeah, that's the last one. Okay, I need one. Who's got one? Right here, come on. Three. Right. Okay. Emma, you right got to stand. Come that's over stand here with me. All right, Emma. You're right here. Okay, four. No, here that's definitely five. Oh, and then I'll take, here, I'll take that table. What? I'll take that table. What? Take that table. Oh, Thank man, y'all need to do this, right. man. Y'all can't count. There we go. Okay, that's it. Here we, here we go. All right, Emma, the way this game works, I, I, I'm so glad I chose you as my last contestant. I, I'll give you this is great. One. Okay, Emma, the way this game works, okay, is um, right now you have an option to choose whatever gift you want to choose, but you can't open it, okay? We're just going to put it right here on this table, all right? Whatever gift any you want to choose. Any gift. Any gift. What, what number would you like? I'm going to go with five. 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 Okay. All right. So go ahead and put your gift right here. Put your gift right here. Um, we actually do have a gift for you. Yeah. Um, What's your name? Joseph. 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 Hey, um, so unfortunately, this is where the game ends for you. However, <laughs> $30 to Spotify, and I'm told it's only five bucks a month for college students. This is six months of Spotify premium on the house, yeah. my friend. Give it up one time. Right, Joseph. Thanks for playing, man. You're done. You're yeah. done. Yeah, Sorry. You're, yeah. 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 You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. You're all right, hey, Emma. 30 bucks to Spotify. Come on, man. That's $30 more than what you walked in with today. Man, Spotify wrapped came out today. <laughs> yeah, I've got yeah, all of mine is like Baby What's Shark. That? Yeah. Xbox? There could be. There could be. Who knows? There Who could knows? be. Okay. That, that's actually good. That's a good, good point. We actually yeah. should, I should tell you what's in some of these boxes, okay? So right now, this is your box, and we're going to eliminate some of these other boxes, but just want to tell you what we're playing for. There are some uh, AirPods. There's um, an yep. Apple Watch. Yep. Uh, there's don't an, shake. Don't shake. Number there, two. There is an air fryer in one of these. There's, I mean, there's all there, sorts of stuff. But there's also... There's also like a Lego set and... Um, there's yeah, something, for something, for something for everybody. Something for everybody. So... All right, so here's what you're gonna do right now. You're gonna choose three gifts, and we're gonna open them right now, okay? So three gifts, all right? Go ahead and, uh, go ahead and say, what, what three gifts you wanna open right now? 
If she says your numbers, just step forward. Step Don't forward. do anything yet. All right, I'm going to go with 10. Okay, go and step forward, number step 10. Step forward, 10. Three. Three, step forward, number three. And two. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. Also, I apologize that we're referring to you by your numbers, but man, I can't learn to Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we're not okay, so, so. Um, all right, all right so we're going to open number two. Okay? Ready? Give me, can I get a little drum roll or something, band? All right. What is it? Okay. Monopoly. Oh, all right. Okay. 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 All right. You can leave great. it out. You can leave it out. Okay. Here, yeah, the the funny okay, thing about that is, is someone asked for rent for their Christmas wish, and, and so you got we couldn't out. afford your rent, but we might hey, as well ben, get a game that has rent hey, in ben, it. Hey, Ben, that's you know? jacked up that you yeah, did that. So, uh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. All right, budgets. Number okay. three. Can I get a drum roll, please? Number three. Number three. Come on, Diego. Can I get it? Here we go. Number three. What do we got? Three. Oh, okay. Oh. A Lego set. Man, a Lego you could get him a full-size Lego set. Hey, it's... <laughs> sorry. It's Christmas time. You know, Man, I'm AirPods, sorry. Apple Watch, Legos. Yeah. yeah. So, on it, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got nothing. All right. All right. Number 10. Number 10. Let's go ahead and open up that box. Here we go. What do we got in there? Oh, gosh. Oh, AirPods. AirPods. All right. Wow. Emma, how do you feel right now? I'm not the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here's the deal. You still have a chance. There's still some really great gifts out there. Um, here's the deal. Uh, if you opened one of these gifts, you get to keep it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Merry Go Christmas. Ahead. Yeah, take it. Take it off stage. Hey, yeah, you guys give our... My man over here trying to have a good attitude with the Lego yeah, set. Like, yeah. <laughs> you can try to white elephant this, but good luck. Good luck. Hey, congrats. Hey, what's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie AirPods. Oh, you, we got a trade. We got a trade. That's amazing. Hey, oh, y'all hey there seat. we go. There we go. Hey, awesome. congratulations. Obviously, y'all get to keep them. Y'all get to keep yeah, them. Yeah, keep it. Keep it. So go keep ahead it. off stage. You can leave the Christmas gifts. Do you gifts. want the box? You can have All right, it. Take it. Go He's for like, it. He's like, I'm about to make gift wrapping easier. Yeah. <laughs> All right, awesome. She won. Right, you don't go. want the gift hey, you box? you guys feel free. You guys can stay you don't want this? a little bit close together. Oh, you're so kind. Okay. Oh. <laughs> there you go. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, watch out. My bad, Brian. Okay. I can stand up. Hey, you like um, threw that at him. AirPods. Hey, AirPods. So the AirPods are off the table. Yeah, so. So that's he, on you, though, because you picked it. So. Uh, yeah, it's your fault. It's your fault. Okay. All right, Emma. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, on, on this round... Um, we're going to make you choose three more gifts. But before that, before that, you have the option right now to swap your gift with any gift out there. Would you well, like to swap? I, no, 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 Ben, you pick three and cheat. Oh, sorry. You need yeah, to pick yeah. three gifts and then we'll swap. So, so you pick, pick three. three gifts. Just yeah. pick three. Go Just ahead. pick three. We'll start there. So pick three. Any three. Pick three. Yeah. All right. Seven. Does that say two? Uh, uh, one. 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 Very close to two. <laughs> eight. And eight. eight. Okay. Awesome. All right. Now you get to swap with any of the ones that you chose. Would you like to if swap? If you want. Can't open it. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Blind swap is what you we guys call this. Do you have a good feeling? Now, nah, she, oh, they that, can't talk. cheating. They've lost their voice. <laughs> no, I'm going to stick with five. She's, She's sticking with five. five. I love it. I, I love, love it. it. She's sticking okay. with guns. I love well, it. Well, okay. Emma, let's see how good of a picker you are. All um, right. Diego? <laughs> let's see what we got in the box number one. Hey! hey. That's a good one. The air, air fryer. fryer. <laughs> Emma. Emma. You can Emma. cook anything in that. Do you have an uh, air fryer? No. Well, Do you want an air fryer? <laughs> yeah. And oh. you, hey, you still don't have an air fryer. Yeah. <laughs> you can wish for that for Christmas. All right. All okay, right, let's see. Number okay. seven. Number There's seven. Go good ahead. Stuff. Diego, we got it. Let's open up. All right. What? Some what fuzzy is that? socks. Fuzzy socks. Hey, who doesn't love some fuzzy socks? I posted that on hey, Instagram. That was what you posted that on Instagram? Was that oh, was wow, what she that was her. Low-key fuzzy socks are awesome, though. Yeah, yeah, they are great. They are are great. you excited? Well, I'm glad she got Yeah, you're not. Yeah. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> you're it's so okay. kind. It's okay. All right. Thanks for... Yeah. All right, let's see. Here we go. We got number eight. Okay, number eight. Let's go ahead and open up number eight. Oh! Oh! What is that? It is a $50 Foot Locker gift card. Not bad. That's, hey, I, I think, one of, the be- one of the best gifts in there. 100%. Oh, did, do you, go, you shop at Foot Locker? I hey, that's not, not Emma. No, that's not too bad. Before. Hey, give it up one time. You guys get to keep your gifts. You guys get gifts. to keep those gifts. Come on. Give it up for them. Give it up for them. You're welcome. All right. Take the box. Okay, so let's come on down. Four, six, so, and nine. There's some big stuff left. Yes. There's a, you already mentioned Apple Watch. There's an Apple Watch. There is a, um, hold on one second. Yeah, what it, reference. Here we go. There's, there's like, an Apple Watch left. There are uh, a, a 2022 planner. Oh my gosh, that's awesome, Emma. It was, it was $10 at Target. Uh, there's, that one's a surprise. I'm not, I don't want to save that one. But there's also a $100 Delta gift card. Yep. 
travel wherever you want. Yep. So that's what's on the table. That's what's on the table. All right. But you got so, a lot of students been flying Spirit, and they're like, ooh, I could try Delta now. <laughs> All right, Emma. So round three, uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit. You nervous? Um, you nervous at all? A little bit. Okay, a little bit, a little bit. Are, are you glad you said yes to play the game? Yeah. Okay, yeah, me too. it's fun. Yeah, she was nervous that it was going to be, yeah, hard. Okay. Sorry, so, Ben, real quick. Yeah. My man, you got anything to say about your sweater? I believe. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Perfect. Yeah, two on. words. Two simple words. All right. So here's, here's the deal, Emma. Uh, we're going to let you choose any box right now, and we're just going to open it straight up, okay? Just any box, you, and you can see what's inside of it. All right. So any box. Go ahead and choose. Which box do you want? All right, Mr. I Believe. I Believe. Oh, okay. I Believe. Go ahead and step forward. I believe. All right, I Believe. You open it. Open it up. <laughs> hey. This is great. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. You're so welcome. You're, you. you're being so, <laughs> he's being so nice, even though he's forcing it. Hey, but this is making for great TV. It's honestly. so good. It's so good. Hey, hey I believe. Thank you. you. Well, done. well done. Merry Christmas. Seriously. All right. When you All get right. organized, don't forget us. <laughs> All right. So um, here we go. We've got three boxes left, including so your own. Nervous. All right. I'm going to let you right now swap any box. Do you want, you should want. she swap? What do you guys think? Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, guys? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? I'm going to keep it. She's yes! going to keep it! Okay, now, I, love, I don't know who should open first. Um, her or them? I, I think them. I think them. Because I want to know, how about this? Open up one of hers, one of theirs, and okay. then we'll open up hers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I like I that. Know okay. what's left. Okay, so, let's, so which one? Which one do you want to choose to go first? You got it. You got it. Nine. Nine. Okay, all right. Nine, go ahead and come up. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Ooh. What you got? $100 oh, to Delta. Delta. We got $100 to Delta. That's a great gift. That's a great gift. You've never flown in your life. Oh, are you like scared of it? No, I'm not scared. Ben, to that's fly. a very vulnerable just, thing to ask. I, I mean, we just never, gave her this kid a Delta just gift just card. Never had a chance to fly. When does that thing expire? You think you'll use it? So. Maybe we'll see. I don't okay. Know. All right. You can probably yeah. Well, hey, playing. that's honestly congratulations though. Congrats, this is great. Yeah, that's a great. Awesome. Okay, yeah. come on, enjoy forward. it. Enjoy it. All right, hey, Emma, come on. Round of applause. Round of applause. Go ahead. So, so all right. here, y'all come to the middle. Ben, so what is I, left? Yeah, go ahead. All right, here, I'll, is yeah, yeah, I'll pick it up. an Apple Watch? Yes. And something that's not as good. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. I, I'm holding that because it's just. I don't it's, know it's who awful. should open. For, I don't know what to do here. Um, Emma right. goes. I think Emma should go. Let's see what Emma's got. All right. Emma, there's an Apple Watch or something else random. Also, um, we're not not rooting for you, but you know, like correct. she picked, it's like, you get it, right? You know what I'm saying? Did you? Oh, you have an Apple Watch. Oh, okay. Uh, Emma's like, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Did you, you purposely choose the, the same, uh, what is that? Oh, it's wrapping sloth, paper. Wallpaper? Wall um, it was a strategy. Wallpaper, yes. it's not wallpaper. It was a strategy, it was, though. Okay. Yes. All right, well, okay. I, I don't think Emma, it worked. now that okay. she has one, I hope you got this. All right, Emma, so... Final reveal. Let's see. It's either an Apple Watch or something. Go ahead. Open it up. Oh. It's a Monstera plant. Go ahead. Open it up. Open it. There's the Apple Watch. Emma. That's Emma. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, what? wait. What's what? about to happen? Uh, do it. Emma, I mean. Oh, my God! Oh! It's so good! Yes! yes! <laughs> That's hey. amazing! Hey. Yes! Great job! Hey! Great job! Oh, man. That's they got the win. Wow! wow. Wow. I got emotional. You cannot script those moments. No, because we didn't script any no. of that. I'm oh about to my cry. God. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Hey, who won the, who, 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 um, the plant, what was your name? Molly. Molly. Molly, you have a heart of gold. Thank you, Molly. Wow. Because you know what I would have done? <laughs> you would have walked off with I would have said, watch. sorry, Emma. <laughs> I'm going to go sell this thing for some new golf joggers. Yes. That's what you would say. I could have got two golf joggers. 
That oh, was really man. cool. That was fun. Honestly, I, this, that's one of it, my favorite Christmas Land moments ever. It literally, unscripted, wow. just that's that amazing. Happened. Emma also, kudos to Emma, made onto the last two, and one of them was the Apple yeah. Watch. So great so job. Good. Great job. Great job. Merry Thanks Christmas, everybody. That's oh, so that cool. Was good. That was um, good. Anybody want a box? Real quick before we <laughs> close out, anybody you want a box? Here you go. I learned my lesson. I'm going to throw it to you. You're welcome. Hey, really, though, we're so glad that you guys are here. Um, if you've never been to Christmas Illuminated before, if it's your first time, um, you know, we are here just kind of for one simple reason. We just want to illuminate for you the meaning of Christmas. And uh, if you're new to faith, if you're not sure about faith, what Christmas is all about, we're just really glad that you're here. And we hope tonight uh, is impactful. And no matter where you are uh, on your faith journey or what you're walking in with tonight, we hope it's encouraging. And we hope it's just a moment for you just kind of forget about all the crazy finals, you're coming out of maybe some family drama from Thanksgiving and it was actually kind of nice to get away from home, whatever it is that you're walking through, we hope tonight is a night where just for a few moments, you can feel the breath come into your lungs, reset your mind on the things that are true, and we believe that um, there's a God that wants to speak to your heart. Yeah, so we're about to um, sing together with the band and um, we're actually gonna sing some Christmas songs, um, yeah. some songs that you hear around this time and you might be familiar with them. Um, you might be too familiar with them, honestly, but um, these songs we're about to sing um, represent who, who God is and who Jesus, what Jesus did and when he came and was born um, a couple thousand years ago. And so we get to worship God in that way with these songs. And so you guys go ahead and stand on up, sing along. We're so glad you're here. Um, sing a little bit. Yep.
Y'all should know this one. Help me sing it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And first and I'm sure we're already feeling that that seasonal ish you know what I'm talking about oh uh, but God thank you for joy would you would you give us an abundance of it this season for the rest of our lives would you give us an abundance of it and would you teach us how to receive what you're giving us so that we can give it away too we love you so much pray this in your name amen and y'all can take a seat. Thanks for worshiping with us. Well, hey, really grateful uh, and excited you guys are here. If we've never met, uh, my name is Samer, and I actually get to serve here as lead pastor at Woodstock City. Uh, but 
living room was like my first home. That's where I started at this church, and uh, I got to uh, be a part of the living room team for a while. Uh, and so this year, I, I changed jobs. And so, um, not because y'all, it was nothing wrong with y'all. Um, but, uh, but I love getting to hang out here any chance that I get and any time that I can. So I'm really grateful uh, to spend the evening with you guys <clears throat> as we celebrate Christmas. Uh, yeah, anyone love Christmas in the house? <laughs> now, let's be real vulnerable. Any Scrooges that are like, nah, not my thing. Okay, they don't even yell. They're just like, yep, me. Uh, that's awesome. We'll talk later. Um, I love all things about Christmas. Uh, I really do. I mean, it, it, it's cheesy, but I, but I love all the things. I love all the desserts. I love all the decorations. I love the, I love the cheesy Christmas movie, movies on Hallmark. Anybody? Candace? Yeah. Right? Oh, wow. She's like, I thought you were worshiping. Like, you were like, yes. Um, Candace Cameron, the king of, ha- the queen, king, queen of Hallmark. Yep. Ooh, oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, love, love it. They're all the same. They're all the same. Uh, but they're all awesome. They're all the same. It doesn't matter. Got me hooked all day, you know? Now Netflix is starting to make their own cheesy movies. It's like its own genre. You know what I mean? It's like cheesy. Pat, you had no idea. She's like, yeah. But it's just, I just love, I love all the, the, all the, the, the magic of Christmas. The, the, I don't know. I, we've got young kids, and so we're trying to navigate the whole Santa Claus thing. And I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to ruin it for some of y'all that still don't know. Uh, but, um, but my favorite, I mean, I really do love, one of the most magical things about Christmas, I think, are the lights. There's something about the lights. Growing up, anyone, anyone grow up going to like the, the, um, the Lights at Life University and you drive through? Yeah. We did it every year. And there's, there's something about, about the lights. You go to anyone in the botanical gardens and their light display is just on a different level. Fellas, if you're looking for a great date in December, my girl is here. Come on, <laughs> preach it. Seriously though, go to the botanical gardens, the holiday lights. It is unbelievable. It's like majestic. It's magical. It's one of the prettiest things that you will see all season. Um, but the lights, there's just something about them. They're magical. There's something about the way that the lights and, and, and what they create and what you see. And for me, what I feel when I see them, there's just something special about lights. And lights are kind of like pumpkin spice, right? You can put them on anything. You know what I mean? Like it's just socially acceptable during this season to put lights on anything. You can put them anywhere and it's fine. No one's going to wonder why are there lights in your room? Why are they up on your balcony? Why are they, you know, around your door? Why are they on your tree? Why are they outside? I mean, lights are everywhere. I don't know. You probably find a way to put them on your car. Like they just, they go everywhere and that's okay. Just lights, Christmas lights. And you know, where I think they're the most special are on the tree. Uh, and, and I don't know how you, how you do tree. I'm a fake tree kind of guy. And I don't care what you think about me. Um, did I get a yes? Yeah, cool. I appreciate it. Wow. More yes than booze. It doesn't matter. We're not going there, people. Stay on track with me. Um, putting the lights on the tree, and every morning it's so fun because we, we this year, my tree, long story, but it, it didn't light up right. By right, I mean like literally 90% of the pre didn't come on, and so I had to put lights on, and it was it's first world problem. I hated it. Um, but so, so every morning, though, when we come downstairs with my girls, the first thing we do is we turn on the Christmas tree, and it's just this like, it's like this magical moment every morning they get to have with my three-year-old and my one-and-a-half-year-old and soon-to-be newborn. Uh, but something about the lights. And it's fascinating. Um, the first time, the first time uh, that they ever put lights on a Christmas tree. It's a fascinating story. I learned this just a couple of years ago. And this kind of, I don't know, I'm, just, I'm not a history major, wherever you are. Uh, but I found this fascinating that the first time they ever put lights on a Christmas tree, we're just so used to it, but what they used to do was candles. They used to, that's how they used to light up Christmas trees, with candles. And that's a fire hazard, so it might got literally lit up. You know what I mean? Like, that's pro- <laughs> probably a bad idea. But in 1882, a guy by the name of Edward Johnson, who was a friend of Thomas Edison, okay? Thomas Edison, guy that invented the light bulb, as far as I know, I should fact check all this with my new history friend. Yeah, okay, I got it, yeah. Uh, but... So Thomas Edison invented a light bulb. So um, this guy named uh, Edward Johnson in 1882, a friend of Thomas Edison, and he was the vice president of the Edison Electric Company. And he developed this like string of lights. Like for us, it's so normal, but this just had never been done before. The string of lights, and there were these big old bulbs, and he wrapped them around, first time I've ever been, wrapped them around his Christmas tree. And he put out a press release on behalf of the Edison Electric Company, and he was like, hey, we've got something special here that's never been done before. You've got to come see it. 
And most of these news outlets just thought that it was just coming to some publicity stunt and most of them didn't show up. But there was one reporter from the Detroit Post and Tribune who showed up. And this is what he wrote after seeing the Christmas tree, the first ever Christmas tree, as far as we know, that had lights on it. Last evening, I walked over beyond Fifth Avenue and called at the residence of Edward H. Johnson, vice president of Edison's Electric Company. There at the rear of the beautiful parlors was a large Christmas tree presenting a most picturesque and uncanny aspect. It was brilliantly lighted with many colored globes about as large as an English walnut. That's how he described a light bulb. There were 80 lights in all encased in, this dainty, in these dainty glass eggs and about equally divided between white, red, and blue. The result was a continuous twinkling of dancing colors, red, white, blue, white, red, blue, all evening. And then this is how he closes it out. I need not tell you that the scintillating evergreen was a pretty sight. One can hardly imagine anything prettier. He's looking at this for the first time, this tree with lights on it, and he's just blown away. He's using words to describe something that we're just like, English, what's an English walnut? You know what I mean? It's like, uh. He'd never seen anything like it before. He was blown away. It was extraordinary. It was remarkable. It was revolutionary. And what's funny is, it took 40 years for this to catch on. 40 years for people to actually start taking lights and putting them on their Christmas tree because some people were skeptical about it. Some people weren't ready to move past the tradition of the candles. Some people thought it was too expensive. And then others, just because of the way the news traveled back then, had no idea it was even possible. This reporter, Edward Johnson, is sitting there and he's seeing something that he's never seen before. He's blown away. And what he saw, light had shown itself in a way like never before. And that is the story of Christmas. Light showing itself in a way like never before. And maybe you've heard the story, I'm sure you have if you grew up in church, or maybe if you didn't, you've heard the story. If you've got no faith at all, you've probably heard bits and pieces of this Christmas story. An angel appears to Mary, who's a teenager, who's about to get married to this guy named Joseph. They're engaged. They went to the botanical gardens. They did the date. Like it, it, they got their wedding planned, and then an angel shows up to Mary, a teenager, and says, listen, there's the favor of God on you. You've, you've been favored in the eyes of God, and, and you're going to be with child, a.k.a. you're gonna get pregnant, and you're gonna have a baby, and you're going to call him Jesus. So Joseph finds out about this because, well, she gets pregnant and he decides he's gonna divorce her quietly because the only way that you can get pregnant, and so he's like, <laughs> don't need history for that one, am I right? So he's like, I'm out. You must have cheated, like you did something promiscuous, like this is not what you're supposed to do. So he decided he was gonna divorce her quietly because there's no way what she said. I can only imagine their conversations. We don't, we don't the taste not in the text. But then an angel shows up to Joseph and the angel says, hey, listen, uh, this is from the Holy Spirit and she will give birth to a son who will save the world from their sins. So Joseph sticks it out and he stays with her and they, they get through all the awkwardness and all the shunning and all the cultural things they would have had to walk through. They get married and then Caesar Augustus, the ruler of the known world at the time, calls for a census to be taken. Do you remember this? And so in order to, um, to, to, to be a part of the census, you had to go register in, the, in your hometown. And so Joseph was born in Bethlehem, so he goes to Bethlehem, his hometown, to register for the census. He takes his really pregnant wife on a really long donkey ride, and that was not cool, but he had to. I can only imagine how crazy that was. So they get to Bethlehem, and then she starts having the baby. There's no room at the inn, so they have to go outside to this barn. And then Jesus, the Son of God, was born wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger, used as a trough to feed animals. After his birth, shepherds came and visited and worshiped this Messiah that was born. Magi from the east came and visited with gifts fit for a king, because that's what he was, a king. 
If you were to read the Gospels and, and read about the birth of Jesus, if you read the Gospels just in general, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are somewhat similar in literary style. Matthew and Luke both have a birth story of Jesus with some level of detail, but when you get to the fourth Gospel, the Gospel of John, it's different than all the other Gospels. It reads different. The style of writing is very different. It's less concrete, less events, and it's just a little bit, um, it's a little bit more abstract than the other three Gospels. And John, he does not talk about the specific events of the birth of Jesus, but he talks about what the birth of Jesus meant. And he talked about the significance of the birth of Jesus. And John, who wrote the Gospel of John, this is what he wrote about the birth of Jesus. In this moment, he's born, and this is what he said. In him, Jesus, was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Kind of like that reporter who saw that first ever Christmas tree and he was blown away by what he was experiencing because he knew he was experiencing something crazy, something marvelous, something that no one else had ever seen before. Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, and the magi were there looking at this baby who was born to be a king, the Messiah the Lord, the promised anointed one to come and they're looking at him and they're like, we are experiencing something miraculous. We're experiencing something incredible. We're experiencing something remarkable. Light with the birth of Jesus, the light of all mankind. Light had shown itself in a way like never before. God took on human flesh to dwell amongst you and me. Light had shown itself to the world in a way like never before. The light that was Jesus, the light that is the Messiah, the light that is the Savior of the world, the light that will never be overcome by darkness, a light that would change the course of human history. A little over 30 years later, so he's born. A little over 30 years later, Jesus finds himself teaching in the temple, temple courts, during the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, uh, the Jewish um, tradition, they have a bunch of different feasts to commemorate different things that have happened in their history. And the Feast of Tabernacles was a particular feast that commemorated um, uh, God guiding the Israelites through the wilderness. You can go read about this in Exodus, um, but there was a season where the nation of Israel was kind of lost in the wilderness and God was guiding them through the wilderness. And, and the, the way that he would guide them is he had this pillar of the, a cloud that would guide them by day and it would turn into fire and it would guide them by night. And so during the Feast of Tabernacles, that we, which is commemorating God guiding them out of the wilderness, they would light candles. And the candles would commemorate God's faithfulness to them to guide them. So candles would have been everywhere around the temple and everywhere around wherever they were as they had this Feast of Tabernacles. So Jesus, about 30 years after his birth, and John already told us his birth meant the light of all mankind had walked onto the planet, was born onto the planet. Jesus right there in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles, presumably with candles behind him, all around him, he stands up in front of all of these people, all of his Jewish compatriots, and he says this in John chapter eight, verse 12, just listen. With all of that context, with candles behind him, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. To all of those attending the feast, to all of his Jewish compatriots and neighbors and brothers and sisters, to this Jewish community, what he is saying is, hey, listen, um, that one time that God sent fire to guide you through the wilderness, well, heads up, there's something different in town. There's someone new in town. He, that same God, the Father, sent me, and I'm not just some light that's gonna guide you through the wilderness. I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me, Whoever surrenders his life to me, whoever surrenders their will to me, whoever chooses to follow me will never walk in darkness because I am the light of all mankind. 
And do you know what light always does? Light always dispels the darkness. In fact, the darker it is, the brighter the light. And Jesus dispels the darkness. He dispels the darkness in your life and he dispels the darkness in my life because it is Jesus. And what we celebrate on Christmas is light entering into the world in a way like never before. That Jesus dispels the darkness of uselessness with the light of purpose. Jesus dispels the darkness of fear with the light of peace. Jesus dispels the darkness of shame with the light of a brand new identity for those that are in Christ Jesus. Jesus dispels the darkness of brokenness and whatever it is that you're walking through or have walked through, and he dispels it with the light of restoration. Jesus dispels the darkness of tragedy with the light of hope. He dispels the darkness of your sin and my sin with the light of his grace, and he dispels the darkness of death with the light of life, because this Savior wasn't just someone that walked onto the pages of history and talked a lot, but he would ultimately be crucified for your sins and for mine, and then on the third day, he did something unbelievable. He rose from the dead. He conquered death. He conquered darkness. Why? Because light shines. His light shines, and the darkness has not will not and never will overcome the light of Jesus. So it's the most wonderful time of the year. But not because Christmas is always pretty and not because it's always gonna go the way that you want it to go and not because everything in your life is perfect and not because your family is perfect and not because there's no drama. No, it's the most wonderful time of the year because we celebrate the fact that Jesus is the light of the world. It's the most wonderful time of the year because this is when we celebrate heaven intersecting with humanity. It's when we commemorate heaven interceding into our mess, into our darkness, into our sin, into our hopelessness, and Jesus shining his light. So two questions. Jesus is the light of the world. One question, is Jesus the light of your world? Is Jesus the light in your darkness? Is Jesus the light in your hopelessness? Is Jesus the light in your story? And if he's not, what's holding you back? You remember with the, the, the lights on the Christmas tree? People were skeptical. People didn't want to leave the tradition of their candles. They thought it cost too much. And some of them just didn't know. But no one thinks that anymore. The Pharisees, you know what they probably thought about Jesus? They were certainly skeptical about this light. They were far more comfortable with their traditions and their candles. They certainly would have said, it's too much to follow you because that means I've got to say everything I've ever believed is wrong. And then some of them just had no idea. What about you? Maybe, maybe there's some skepticism. That's okay. Maybe there's a part of you that's afraid to leave the tradition of your life, what you've always done. And it's kind of scary stepping into something new. And that's, that's okay. Maybe the cost you feel is too high to, follow Jesus. Maybe, maybe you just had no idea who Jesus was, what he did, and why we show up week in and week out to sing about his love for us. What you need to know is that there is a savior that came to die so that you could live in relationship with your heavenly father that there is a God that loves you. There is a God that is for you. And even if he's never been on your radar, you have always been on his. And in the midst of whatever you're walking through, in the midst of any of your hopelessness, in the midst of any of your peaceless heart, your restless soul, there is a God who wants to give you a fulfilling life that is found in Jesus. 
There is a savior that wants to see you experience a fulfilling life. There is a savior that wants to see you experience more fulfillment than regret in life. And yeah, it'll cost you because we gotta surrender our will and our way to follow this Jesus. What he gives us in return is life, hope, peace, purpose, grace, light. That is the life that you and I can cling to. So Jesus is the light of the world. And he wants to be the light of your world. In fact, we celebrate Christmas because he came to be the light of your world. And some of you, some of you have been following Jesus for quite some time, and you need to be reminded of that reality. That there is nothing that you could do to mess this up, nothing that you could do to, to, to make God ashamed of who you are. There's nothing you could do to make God love you less. No, 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 he's the light of your world for good. Second question. And if you're a Jesus follower, this one's for you. He came to be the light of the world. Are you reflecting the light of the world? Are you reflecting the light that Jesus came to bring? Because you know what's crazy in Matthew chapter five? You know what he called me and you? He said, you are the light of the world. And he said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds let your light shine before the world. Let your light shine before your family. Let your light shine before your roommates. Let your light shine before your campus. Let your light shine before your sorority and your fraternity and your team and the circles of influence that you have. Let your light shine before the people in front of you that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven that this world should be a better place because there are Jesus followers in it, that your campus should be better, that your apartment should be better, that this city and our counties should be better because there are Christians living to reflect the light of Jesus, the love, the kindness, the patience, the self-control, the grace, the forgiveness that Jesus shows you and me. And so maybe this Christmas, there are people in your spheres of influence that are going to interact with the light of the world because you chose to reflect it. And then you get to be a part of the story that God is writing in the lives of people, in the hearts, in the stories that he's redeeming. So, is he the light of your world? It's a question worth asking. And are you reflecting his light to the world? If you're a Jesus follower, it's a question that you cannot escape. And this world would be better for it. Because watch this. Y'all don't need me to tell you this. This world is full of a lot of darkness today. And it's our job to light it up in the name of Jesus. So on your way in, you guys got a candle. You guys gonna pull that out. And in just a second, not yet, in just a few moments, our staff is gonna come and we're gonna light the candles on the, on the rows and y'all can help each other light. Y'all know what I'm saying, right? Just light, y'all know how fire works. Okay. So here's, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna have this cool candle moment, but, but let me just really quick, can I just set this moment up for you guys just for a moment, and then we're gonna, we're gonna sing one song together with our, with our candles lit. This isn't just because like, oh, it's Christmas, like you just light candles. Here's what I want this moment for a second to be for you, and I think it could be multiple things for a lot of you. That as your candle gets lit here in just a minute, maybe for you what that symbolizes and signifies is it is symbolic of God showing up in your life this year in a way that was unexpected. Maybe for you, it's God intervening in your life in a way that you never expected. Maybe for you, when your candle gets lit, maybe what it commemorates for you is some unexplainable peace that you experience in the midst of a really, really tough year. And you couldn't explain it, but you just felt like, man, this is awful, but 
I, I just, I know that God's with me. That for you, maybe that light is going to reflect that this year you made a decision to follow Jesus, <laughs> which is really cool. We celebrated a lot of those stories at home night a couple weeks ago. Maybe for you, what that light is going to symbolize or signify is maybe you found yourself back in church for the first time this semester. Maybe, and I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand, maybe it was the first time tonight. And regardless of what you believe, that light is representative that, man, there's something that God is up to in here. Maybe when that candle gets lit, maybe it symbolizes that for the first time in a long time, here you found a place that you feel like you belong. For all of us, my hope is that when that candle gets lit, you are reminded that there is a God who sent his son to light up your world in the best possible way. And then, I'll close with this. For some of you, you're walking into this room tonight and you've never placed your faith in Jesus before. And maybe tonight for the first time you're hearing about this Jesus, you're hearing about his grace, you're hearing about his love and you're hearing about his work. Maybe tonight for you, when that candle gets lit, it's representative of you for the first time putting your faith in Jesus. So before I call our staff down, I just, I just wanna do this just for a moment. If, if you're in the room tonight and you've never placed your faith in Jesus before, you had a lot of questions about faith, but maybe tonight something is just making sense, that there was this thing called sin that stood in the way between me and a heavenly father, that we had a sin problem. And then Jesus came to die for my sins and for yours because sin required sacrifice. And so Jesus took on the entire sacrifice for the world on the cross. He took the penalty of our sin, which was death. But then on the third day, he resurrected from the grave. He beat darkness and death forever so that whoever would place their faith in his work would be able to experience that victory and live in relationship with God and not have a perfect life, but a purposeful one, a hope-filled one, because that's what Jesus offers you and me. It's not about a religion, it's about a relationship. So, if that's you tonight, if you've never placed your faith in Jesus, there's no like magic way to do it, it's actually oddly simple. It's in this moment, and maybe as we sing this next song, confessing to Jesus, hey, I am a sinner, and I know that I need a savior. And I wanna follow you as best as I can. And so maybe for you tonight, that's you. And maybe as that candle gets lit, that's the prayer that you pray. I confess that I'm a sinner in desperate need of a savior. Jesus, I want to follow you. So I'm gonna ask our staff to come down. And they're gonna, y'all go ahead, we're gonna light the ends. And y'all just work your way in. Let me give you guys just a moment to do that. And then together, we'll stand up and we're gonna sing a song about that night when light had shown itself in a way like never before.
This is a really cool picture here. If this year you would say that God showed up in your life in a way that was unexpected, and you don't have to make it up, it's okay, but if, it, if that's you, would you just put your candle up? It's cool. If uh, this year if this year was, you found yourself back in church for the first time, either ever or in a long time, would you put your candle up? Wow, that's cool. If this year, whether here, this semester, last semester, or even in a different church, you were baptized this year, would you put your candle up? That's cool. If, um, careful clap them by the way, I'm gonna set this place on fire. If, uh, if either tonight or any time this year, you put your faith in Jesus for the first time, would you put your candle up? And if, oh, you, 
you consider this place a home. Would you put your candle up? I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. I can't help it. I got to take a picture of this moment. Alexi, I'm going to get you some good Instagram content. Don't move. I'm doing a pano. Um, what we know for sure is that there's a Savior that loves you. And this season, our hope on behalf of the team that makes the living room happen every single week and on behalf of our church, we just want you to know that our hearts are for yours, that our um, belief is behind you, and we love you, and our hope for you is that you would just get a more clear picture of what it might look like to follow Jesus because we just simply think this, it's the best thing that you could ever do with your life. And if you leave here today either pondering, curious about, believing for the first time, or just being reminded of the fact that Christmas is about light showing itself in a way like never before. And tonight was worth your time. We can go ahead and blow our candles out so that we don't do any damage. Hey, let me do this real quick. I would love to, to pray for you, to pray for your holiday season, to pray for your finals. And I got a couple things uh, that I'd love to share with you. Can I just pray for y'all real quick? Heavenly Father, thank you for these students. Thank you for their hearts. Thank you for these young adults. Thank you for these friends. Thank you for these roommates. Thank you for these influencers. Thank you for the people in this room. Father, I pray that you would bless them. Father, I pray that you would remind them that you are with them, that you are for them, and that the love of Jesus covers every inch of them. And I pray that as they head into final season, God, I pray they'd crush them. I pray you'd make them productive. I pray you'd give them energy. Father, I pray that you would help them with the stress. And Father, I pray that as they go home, as they go whatever they're walking into in the holiday season, I pray that there would be peace. I pray they would shine your light so bright that you would be so evident everywhere they go. I pray for no family drama. I pray for the reconciliation of relationships. I pray that you would fill these students up. We love them, but we know you love them even more. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, a couple things on your way out. Uh, one, we really, really do love you guys so much. This team, the living room team, they love you so much. Our church loves you so much. And um, we hope you all have a safe, safe holiday. Uh, two things on your way out. One, um, you guys are going to get this postcard on your way out light of the world, and on the back, it's just got some really creative ways for you to maybe shine and reflect the light of Jesus over this next month, and so we hope it just might spark some fun ways that you can be Jesus to people, and then we call this place Home Away From Home, a place that you can belong, because that's just what you need in this season of your life, and nothing says home for Christmas or home for the holidays like milk and cookies, which is exactly what you'll find on your way out, and so... We hope that y'all would hang with us, uh, hang out with some people, uh, enjoy milk and cookies. Merry Christmas. We love y'all so much, TLR. We'll see you next year. Amen. Absolutely.